Auntie, what do you want Santa to tell her what you've asked for? Uh, I've asked for... Look at the canvas. I've asked for... Uh, some baby ball clothes. Can you blink for me, Millie? Good girl. Can you do me a big smile? That's a clever girl. Time starts now. Okay. I can see a six year old girl who is well looking, alert, and looks like a appropriate for his uh, her weight and height. Although I like to plot her weight and height on the appropriate growth chart. He's not she's not not syndromic to me. The setting is definitely in the hospital. Uh, hospital may be in the OPD setting. And she's not in a distress and uh, I can't see anything uh, around. On my this evolution, my video, I can see uh, there's a facial asymmetry, especially on the right side. There is a loss of this uh, nasolabial fold, and on the left side, there is the angle of mouth is deviated. And uh, when the examiner is basically asking to close the blink her eyes, then she's not able to blink this uh, right eye. So this much actually I can see in this video. Okay, what do you want to know from the history? I want to know from the history, like, uh, is there is any viral infection? Uh, is it like uh, uh, insidious onset or acute onset? And uh, then I would like to look for any head, head injury or any convulsions. Anything else? I would like to basically exclude this, this thing also. Uh, this uh, malignancy also to look for the weight loss, this deteriorated school performance, and then any history of fever, and uh, this are also I like to because I have to basically evaluate the secondary causes like in terms of tumor, this infection, inflammation, and this malignancy I have to rule out. Okay, what are the other clinical signs you want to look for? In this, actually, then I will like to basically look for this, uh, this thing. Uh, I like to, to say uh, smile. Then I like to go this thing, the puff, blow, and uh, then uh, look up. These are the things actually which I like to look, go for. Okay. And anything else? Uh, I will... Uh, look for the ear also because uh, uh, this uh, i will look for the mastoiditis also and the, this uh, herpes zoster and the, also in the ear because i have to differentiate uh, i have to exclude the causes of this uh, this facial nerve palsy which is on on the right side lower lower, lower motor neuron and most of the time it is idiopathic Achha. so what do you think is the diagnosis or your differentials if you have I have a right lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy. Okay, most common cause is? Most common cause is Bell's palsy that's idiopathic. Okay, so considering this, is this is a case of Bell's palsy, right-sided lower motor neuron facial palsy. How will you proceed to investigate the case? I will like to, uh, first of all, uh, I like to take complete history and examination from head to toe. And uh, then I would like to plot his weight and height and appropriate growth chart. I like to take her vitals. And then I like to go to the full neurological examination that includes the other clinical examination. And uh, I like to go for the fundoscopy also. And then I like to go for the ear, nose, and throat examination. And uh, then I would like to go look for this uh, liver, spleen, abdomen also to, to rule out this uh, malignancy. And blood pressure is also very important. Okay. And then... How will you uh, manage? Yeah. My management part in this investigation, actually, if uh, uh, in this investigation, no investigation is required. And I would like to manage uh, uh, if there is a herpes, then definitely like to give acyclovir. And if it is less than 72 hours, then like to go to steroids. Steroids for uh, for a one one week, five to seven days time. And uh, this is my uh, this uh, immediate management. And I like to involve the ophthalmologist to patch the eye which is not able to close. 
and that i would give some uh, some this this is called carbamate ointment i think i'm not sure any other professional you would like to involve i would like to involve this uh, neurologist neurologist only like to involve after 4 weeks but as, as immediately i would like to involve the ophthalmologist okay so what is the prognosis of bell's palsy bell's palsy have got a very good prognosis but there could be recurrence if there is a recurrence then definitely i like to discuss uh, with my seniors and uh, i would like to make the uh, this uh, follow up with the general uh, general pediatrician for uh, sorry general practice gp for the four weeks if it is not being needed then definitely i like to involve the neurologist and i'll go for the mri any time period you prefer you want to go for the mri or would you do immediately or is there is a specific time period after, after which you would after like to do four weeks after four weeks good okay so i think how time is up i think Manish, Dr. Manish. 10 seconds left. Okay. More than enough. So, okay. timer. Okay. Dr. Narish, you can uh, open the cam if it's okay with you. Just a minute. Uh, I was opened by it is closed. Yes. Yeah. Your, uh, uh, this initial description was good. You said that the setting might be in a hospital setting where you see a child with facial asymmetry and she was not able to open her, uh, or, or she was not able to close her right eye, not open, yeah, I think. Yeah, blink, close her not, able, not able to blink. Blink, actually. Yes. So more or less, you get, got an idea about it, that mm. this is a right-sided lower motor neuron facial palsy. Mm. So you rightly said that the most common is Bell's palsy. And from the history, from the history, we have to rule out whether it is an idiopathic uh, lower motor neuron palsy, which is the Bell's palsy, or there are other causes. So our thing which comes to our mind when we think of a lower motor neuron facial palsy, we always think that this is a Bell's palsy. But we know that there are many, many other causes of this lower motor neuron facial palsy. The most common is rightly the Bell's palsy, then others are infections. Infections, the most common is the varicella infections, the then herpes simplex infection, then Lyme disease, mumps. These are because if we know the causes, we will know what to ask in the history. Okay. okay. Then trauma, you rightly said from the history, I wouldn't like to know about trauma. From the history, you should first will be onset, cause, duration of action. When did it start? It should be the first question. When, when, we, when this problem, any problem for anything in the history, when did it start? How did it progress? Anything making it better? Anything making it worse? Anything taking for it? Okay, then comes, we have to now rule out. Can there be some other causes? It may be idiopathic, out of no reason no. this can occur, Mums. or it may be due to some other causes, due to infections, due to trauma, due to high blood pressure, then uh, due to some developmental, if this, uh, it, if had been a very small child with some developmental abnormality of the ear canal, then it might may have some congenital bony problems, no? which occurs then. Also, history, you rightly said, I would like to rule about the tumors by looking about, asking about fever, weight loss, sweating, increasing. So these are the history. So first, think of the Bell's palsy, what to ask, onset course duration from it, then rule out the causes from the history. So that there might be, there might be, you never know, because this is a very common station. They might, oh yes, the child has fallen uh, just yesterday. After that, she developed. So history of trauma, we might be thinking of idiopathic balls palsy, but ultimately it came out that this is a lower motor neuron facial palsy due to trauma. So it can be, you never know, no, they can give yes, anything yes. and anywhere. Yes, okay. Yes, so now from the history that you and here this charge, okay. And history also one thing, the facial nerve is involved. Okay. The facial nerve has a course. You know the course of the facial nerve. No. Yeah. It has a course. And at what point the facial nerve is involved will determine what are the symptoms the uh, child may have. There might be defect in the lacrimation, there might be defect in the salivation, there might be another important point, hyperacusis. 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 So, 
you we, we never know at what point the facial facial nerve is a long nerve it is yes. it comes out of the uh stapedius muscle yeah, uh, the stapedius, that, yeah end of the from the stapiary stylomastoid foramen but before that the uh, facial nerve is a big course it has a nucleus then to the CP angle, it enters the facial canal, then it comes to the stylomastoid foramen, it comes out. So during this course also facial nerve may be involved. So there might be some other symptoms also. Three important symptoms are lacrimation, salivation, and hyperacusis. Yeah. Okay. And ear discharge, you can history, you can ask of ear discharge, any history of morning headache. I'm giving you all the details. If possible, whatever you remember, thinking of the cause, you can ask. Okay. Any history of swelling of the cheeks. Another important cause of facial nerve palsy is a intranasal influenza vaccine. Okay. Okay, you can ask a history of vaccination. So if the examiner asks, why are you asking any history of recent influenza vaccine? Because this is associated with intranasal, uh, this is uh, associated with uh, facial nerve palsy. Okay. Got it. So in this way, you can ask some of the important points. This will really give you some brownie points in the history. Mm -hmm. Next, what are the other clinical signs? So clinical signs, what you want to do? Examine. You want to do a complete neurological examination, isn't it? You want to do the complete examination of the facial nerve. Instead of saying, I will uh, do this, do that, uh, means I will want to do complete examination of the seventh cranial nerve so then the examiner may ask what are the things you would like to do for because your answer was i would like to blow the cheek i would like to do this instead of that you just you can say all these things but just put a headline to it that i want to examine the seventh cranial nerve thinking it uh, as a case of Bell's palsy. So this is one of the thing full neurological examination that uh, ENT right, very rightly said for abdomen hepatosplenomegaly to rule out any uh, malignancies, then scars of the trauma, then BP and skin, skin examination, Lyme disease, you might get erythema migraines yeah. and all. Yes. So a complete examination thinking of the cause. So facial uh, lower motor neuron palsy is not about Bell's palsy. It's about everything included. Yes. Okay, uh, then investigations, uh, nothing to be done. Yes, if it is an idiopathic Bell's palsy, nothing to be done if you're confirmed. But we are not confirmed. We are just going into the yeah. differential. So you can you can do a full blood count if it is a cause of underlying malignancy. If there is infection, you have to do the blood sugars. You have to do, you can also do an ultrasound of the facial nerve also. Okay, you can also do as a part of the predictor of the outcome of the balls, Bell's palsy. These are the recent things which I'm telling you. And uh, then there is a 3D examination of the facial nerve exons also. You can do. These are the recent uh, developments which are going on. Serological tests uh, for underlying Lyme disease. If you get evidence of Lyme disease, if you get varicella, if you get this ear, no? This vesicles yeah, in the ear. The Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Ultimately, it becomes the Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Right. Have you heard about it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is the cause. And ultimately, we have to do an MRI. If the facial, you rightly said, you are very right that after four weeks, if it does not resolve, we have to do an MRI. So step by step, because full blood count, we have to say, because mm -hmm. we don't know, we are thinking that this is an idiopathic Bell's palsy. It can be, un it can, uh, there, can uh, there might be other causes of this idiopathic, uh, of this, not idiopathic, of this lower motor neuron facial palsy so this caused the uh, the investigations gone then management you are very good at the management you said about the drugs which is your uh, prednisolol steroid which is given within 72 hours but before we giving steroids what we should do there is an important right. thing we should do before giving mm -hmm. steroids we should always rule out leukemia hypertension brain yeah. tumors or middle ear disease because yes. this will aggravate no if there exactly. is some middle ear pathology yeah. and if you give steroids it will aggravate okay mm -hmm. and steroid doses one milligram per kg for one week followed by tapering dose and if we suspect herpes which is the most common cause herpes uh, infection then you should I add see. acyclovir to the steroid therapy Okay, if the cause is some anatomical abnormality, we have to decompress 
we have to do surgical decompression of the facial canal if some problem of the facial canal has caused the facial nerve injury care of the eyes you are very good most of the uh, candidates forget about the care of the eyes because if the child keeps her eye open then Corneal Keratitis. ulcer is one of the various serious Keratitis. side effects. Keratitis. Yes. Therefore, we have to protect the eye. Carbomar ointment, you rightly said eye patch. Another thing I think you forgot to tell, it's the physiotherapy role. Isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, you have to tell about the physiotherapy. If it is an idiopathic Bell's palsy, the, after giving sir, the physiotherapy has a very important role in it. Okay, you should not forget about the role of physiotherapy. So when I asked you about the prognosis about uh, Bell's palsy, if it is a case of Bell's palsy, considering this, you sh usually these cases they recover very um, easily within uh, within four weeks probably, and only. 85% they have some mild problem, mild residue, but they, they, most of them recover. Only 5% they remain with severe facial weakness, which is permanent. 85 to 95% either complete recovery or sometimes mild problem. And in only 5% there is severe permanent, then the permanent defect they remain. So if the defect remains for more than four weeks as you rightly said you have to do an mri okay so this is some of the things thank which i have so added much. otherwise it was very good dr thank manish you. you want to add something you can add thank you so much dr banara uh, yes. really really very nice this thing i i came to the two three things new in this uh, facial now one is an internasal vaccine then physiotherapy yeah. and then mm -hmm. you like but uh, uh, but just I want to add one question. I ask one question. Yes, like sure. If, if we are going to tell all these things, when then we are basically not. I mean, just in the six months, we can't tell all these things. So like no, no, you can't tell definitely. But if the I am giving you this just to pre. give you the points because you never know the examiner. If the examiner says things that no, I will not ask about the idiopathic Bell's palsy. I want mm. to know about other causes. Yeah. yeah. Only if you know, at least I have told you so many no, causes, no, at I... least you can get three, four causes. Yes, yeah. there are other causes of, examiner may ask, are there other causes of the lower motor neuron? You have to know other causes. You yeah, just I know, I know, study mumps, only, you know. I know mumps, got golden berry syndrome, Lyme yeah. disease, and then cholesterol. There, there, is, there is just one page in pediatric guidelines oh. uh, and uh, that you have to read. I told her everything from the pediatric guideline. Yes, yes, so, yes, but, yes, uh, yes. But the only thing actually which I came to know new from Dr. Banali is really good. Like I didn't know that internasal vaccine and then physiotherapy. So, so when Dr. Banali asks you that what additional examination would you like to do? So you have to say it like this in exam that after taking vitals and anthropometric measures, I would like to do full neurological examination, including cranial nerves. I told that specifically, told that. specifically, this, this you have to say like this okay. uh, specifically, seven specifically I'll be doing a seventh nerve examination. And after that, I'll be doing complete ENT examination. I'll be looking for external ear for any vesicles. I, I'll be checking mm. a middle ear for any, uh, for any infection. And then I'll be checking for lymph nodes. I'll be uh, doing abdominal examination, looking for hepatosplenomegaly because I want to rule out. Uh, because I want to rule out uh, malignancy. malignancy and when you have when you have told that initially when I started that after taking vitals and anthropometric measures they are only they are um, mentioned that I'll be specifically checking blood pressure that is yeah. important I told blood that pressure yeah I yeah. told that I told that yeah yeah yeah, you have uh, tried to include more, but uh, yeah. just a little bit more systematically so that the examiner yes, does not sir. forget what you told. 